Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be discussing about the transit simulation environment, which we have primarily built to focus on public transportation. This allows us to assess the impact of various transportation routes in the city and how people will interact with it. The system relies on identifying the commuter preferences, which we are collecting through surveys and calibrating the user trips from each census block or traffic analysis zone to match the activity seen in real life. The simulator will help to identify and address the eventual challenges of low transit efficiency by combining the complementary advantages of fixed and dynamic route transit systems. It will do this seamlessly by integrating them and focusing on three primary objectives. One is to reduce the energy per passenger per mile by at least 10%. Two, reducing total energy consumed by at least 10%. And three, increasing the availability of daily trips served by public transit by a number of 10%. So we get into the system, which is the transit simulator, which is a fast micro simulation, and eventually it can ignore the background traffic to give us quick uh, results. The simulation considers multiple inputs to set up the desired scenario. Number one is the road network, which is selected from open street maps, which represents the city uh, or the region's roads. Two is the transportation demand, which is obtained by generating origin destination pairs from publicly available data sets like loads and also from other city organizations. The bus schedules are found from the GTFS specified by a particular transit agency. Also, we need to identify the number of individual cars on the road uh, to get a proper assessment of the traffic speeds. This data is then fed into the Python intermediate with structures and converts them into Sumo usable formats, wherein Sumo is a open source uh, transit simulator. Sumo performs the simulation for desired periods of time, which is usually 24 hours, and outputs the movement details of each bus. It's like the speed, acceleration, distance covered, and so on. We can then use this data to find the average speed of each traffic lane and calibrate those lanes to the found speeds. This is the speed due to the background traffic, that is, all the other vehicles except the buses. This information is further used down the line in the updated type of simulation, which we'll discuss, called the background traffic elimination method. In the background traffic elimination method, it requires the same inputs as used earlier, along with the calibrated background speeds. Since we do not need to simulate the movement of all vehicles and focus only on bus movements, it can cut the duration of running the program by a large amount. And we can get uh, very fast results, like uh, around five minutes of execution time on a regular PC can provide us the results which we were generating earlier. It functions similar to the previous scenario, but the lane speeds are then individually modified here using a component of Sumo called Tracy or the Traffic Control Interface Client. It allows us online, that is while the simulator is running, to control the lanes and the buses. The outputs are the details of the buses' movements, which can further be used for energy calculations. So how do we get the individual inputs? Uh, the first would be the route network. This is prepared from the OpenStreetMap. Uh, first, we download the specified areas map. We then import in, into the net edit tool, which is a part of the Sumo environment. And we trim out excess details like the railroads and the walkable only roads and other features which are not pertaining to our simulation. And this, uh, after this, we remove or add the traffic lights at the proper intersections, which we can relate to in real life. This allows us to get a good replica of the city's actual road network. The next step is the origin destination pair generation. We collect the data from open data sets like loads, which is for jobs, 
on a census block group scale for movement of people from one place to the other. We then select the housing and the work locations in the respective census block groups uh, from multiple data sources, primarily OpenStreetMaps. We then prepare a one-to-one -one mapping of the home and work locations. The home location acts as the origin, while the work location acts as a destination. By uniform sampling across the home and commercial locations, a combination of them uh, along with the travel start time and the return time is generated. Thus, we can get a large set of origin destination uh, pairs of people moving. Next, we also need the GTFS for the transit lines and the buses, bus schedules, which is provided by the local transit authority. In our case, it's CARTA. The map here shows uh, all the bus lines operating in Chattanooga, and we use this data for getting the bus routes, the bus stops, and the schedules. Next, we also need to sometimes correct the routes and the bus stops, which get shifted from the actual locations on uh, physical uh, world to somewhat of a skewed location in the data that we have. We do this using something called map matching and stop matching. As you can see here, the bus stop was initially shifted from the actual road, but we can uh, move it to the desired location automatically for all the stops on the routes. Similarly, we can do the same for routes, which get a little skewed or move from the actual roads, and we can properly align them using the map matching feature. Post this step, we get clean routes and stops, removing any fuzziness in the bus movement while simulating. And here's a short clip of a bus moving through multiple stops on the simulated roads of Chattanooga. The yellow block, as you can see, is the bus, and the green blocks are the bus stops. And it's moving from stop to stop. So that, with that simulation, we can get the multiple types of outputs. And the first one I would like to show here is the graph, which shows the simulated sum of passengers who have boarded a specific bus. And there are a number of buses operating under uh, CARTA. These are over a period of 24 hours. This gives us a distribution of which bus the passengers use the most and if we look deeper, we can also get at what times they use the most. Since our goal is to increase ridership, we can simulate different scenarios and look for increased ridership outcomes. The second graph focuses only on electric buses and how their charge depletes, which is given by the state of charge values. And uh, when it would also have been good to charge them, which is indicated by the blue dots. We can predict and optimize bus charging times during the hours of operation from this data for a better serving the routes. And in case of fleet-wide electrification, we can optimize the energy usage, the cost of charging, and power draw from the electric grid as well. The third graph on the left shows the absolute error in the bus arrival times at all stops, which is compared with the baseline time, which is usually the APC or automated passenger count data, which is from the real life bus movements. And it is shown over a period of one week. Its comparison uh, shows when a bus arrived in the simulation to a particular stop versus the, when the bus arrived in the real time. And as you can see, the error is usually under 10 minutes for most days. Uh, this shows that the simulation can very closely match the real life bus speeds and the movement times. So this is the outcome of a simulation and what we can do in brief. Uh, thank you all.